Key figures, 30 horsepower up, 15 kilos down, 10,000 pounds more expensive, 0 to 60, three and a half seconds, and the exhaust from the Evora 400. And what does that do to a car that was already quick? Now I don't have that much experience with the old 350. In fact, my sum total of driving experience was the review that I did for that car last week. And it's not like that car was screaming out for more power and most people suspected that there really wasn't any more to be gained from the old engine setup without moving to the charge cooled unit that the Evora 400 and 410 now use. Now the reason that Lotus had always cited for not doing so was the added weight that that setup would bring when the Exige has been about performance through light weight rather than extra horsepower but they decided that with the use of a smaller pulley for the supercharger and a few other tweaks here and there, they could liberate an extra 30 horsepower. Now, really I'd need to back to back those two cars to tell, but one thing I can say for certain is that this car has plenty of go in it. pulls very very strongly in the mid-range and it goes right to the red line which is now slightly lower in red lines at 6,800 rpm rather than the old around about 7,000. Lotus say that is to protect the engine and gearbox from the stresses and strains involved with the extra power. Now that is slightly confusing because the Sport 410 has 410 horsepower and revs to 7,000 RPM quite happily and that's with the same gearbox and fundamentally the same engine. We suspect the new lower red line is probably more to protect the supercharger which it is generally acknowledged is probably working at capacity. Throttle response is instant, steering is superb, at low speeds with these super sticky Cup 2 tyres on it's very very heavy. This is not a great car to manoeuvre around car parks at all and that is even in the context of things like the Elise which are already tricky as it is. On the move of course it's fine and the payoff is that superb feel through this familiar but tiny steering wheel. Really though to me the headline of this car is the way it looks. Now this example is in the ludicrous shade of Kawasaki green which suits this car's personality down to a T. It is just mind-blowing to see it in the flesh. I was a little bit dubious about some of the add-ons and things but they really really work and apparently on track they really work too. This car has more downforce than the old car and at no extra drag. That's a real trick to pull off. It uses the spoiler from the Elise Cup 250, so it looks quite different to the old car. I think the old car was perhaps a prettier, sleeker affair, but this thing is just aggressive. It's turned up to 11. As a visceral experience, this car is second to almost none. The only thing which is going to be more involving and more extreme than this, in the Lotus range anyway, is going to be one of the full-blown Cup cars. And I hope in the future to be able to film a Cup 380 because those are incredible. But we're not doing that today, we're doing the Sport 380. And £10,000 is a lot of money. That is basically the difference in price between this and the 350. How do they justify it? Well, this car is covered in gorgeous carbon fibre parts. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The current carbon fibre parts that Lotus are making are absolutely superb. The quality of the weave, the fit and finish is up there with anything made by, say, McLaren or Ferrari. It's really, really good stuff. Compared with the 350, the 380 comes with over 10,000 pounds of options as standard. 
full leather or Alcantara, forged wheels, two-piece brakes, and a lightweight lithium-ion battery are all standard on the 380, as well as the carbon fiber lip, axis panel, and wing. You could almost see the 380's extra power as just an added bonus. Apparently, most people that had orders for 350s changed for the 380 the moment that it was announced. And I can see why they do that, because if you're going to go fast around a track, this is an absolutely brilliant car. It's not all perfect, however. There are a few issues. A couple of them are related to noise. Now, I don't know what it is with Lotus, but they seem to have a complete inability at the present time to get seats in their cars correct. The seats in this, much like my friend Steve's Exige, are making all sorts of noises. They are rattling like I've dropped a bag of Lego down the back. It's not really very nice, and on a car with a price tag of around £80,000, Lotus, what are you doing? Sort it out, come on! They're seats, they're basic. You don't even make many of them. Like, please get them right. The regular Exige seats are generally quite fine. For some reason, these cup seats, they can never quite get spot on. I don't know why. That's the other big problem, the exhaust. It sounds absolutely delicious, just like the Evora 400. That's because it's the same exhaust. And just like that car, it's far too loud to get on any UK track day. It's switchable, but because of the way they've designed the system, when you hit 4,500 RPM, it goes to loud mode in order to protect the engine from the flow of gases. And when you get tested at around 5,000 RPM at most tracks, that means you're going to fail. And even if you could somehow pass the static test, you're almost certainly going to fail any sort of drive-by. So that's annoying because when you buy one of these cars, almost the first thing you're going to have to do is go to someone like Bell and & Colville and buy one of their nice exhausts so that you can take your car on track without fear of being kicked off because you've upset the local council. And that seems to be something of a oversight on Lotus's part, because let's be quite honest here, you're going to buy this car to take on track. That's its purpose in life. I mean, all this downforce kind of stuff, this doesn't make a difference on the road. You're never going fast enough. On a track though, it will. Not perhaps the biggest difference, but it does make a tangible difference. This is a car that produces real proper downforce. On days like today, this car is quite literally welded to the ground because it does not have anywhere near the Evora 400's magical ability to cover bumpy roads at speed. On the exact same stretch of tarmac I've just driven the 410, this car ground out about two or three times. In fact, it did so just there, and we're only doing about 20 miles an hour, and I know roads which are a lot worse than this. So, in reality, you're probably going to have to back off down certain roads, but on track, I'm sure that brings it great advantage. The XE Sport 380, should you buy one? Well, ask yourself this question. Does this look like it's worth 10,000 pounds more than the regular 350 to you? If the answer to that question is yes, then absolutely, this is the car for you. If you're not really that fussed about the way it looks, I personally would suggest you save your 10 grand, buy the 350, spend a little bit of money on making that go faster, and really, you're gonna have a hell of a good time in either of these. Personally, I just love the way that this thing looks, and I can see why most 380 customers are existing 350 customers. It's just got so much purpose and aggression about the whole thing. I really, really love it. To me, the x just totally found its niche and has really, really nailed the brief. And remember that that 70 something thousand pound price with options is still some way cheaper than the equivalent 911 GT3. And thanks to the way the market is working at the minute, it's still somewhat cheaper than a Cayman GT4. And this is going to be a lot faster than certainly the GT4. I believe. A few people have done some tests, but nothing that I really believe the results of. But you're certainly going to have a hell of a good time on track with this. And that's maybe the only shame that that exhaust is going to get in the way. But fortunately, the guys here at Bell & Coville will happily fix that for you. 
and I just want to say a big thank you to them for lending me the car for the day. It's been awesome as usual. That's it. A quick review of a quick car. Oh, you're still here. Well, as I have your attention, I've been told that around 84% of the people watching my videos haven't subscribed yet. Is that you? If you think you want to subscribe, click this button here or the one somewhere down here that says subscribe. Or if you're still on the fence and want to watch some more of my content, you'll find suggestions for videos here, here and here. What are you waiting for? Go on, keep watching.